Hi my loves, welcome and welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Katora and today's video is gonna be a little vlog update Q&A. It's been two years since I've done one, or maybe it's been one, but it's been two years since I've vlogged up, so I figured it was time to give you guys a little update on my journey and how things have been going for me. I asked you guys on my Instagram story to ask me questions pertaining to my locks and I got a bunch of questions. I took a screen recording of them because like it was too many to just screenshot so i'm just gonna answer them as i see them i did get a lot of the same questions so hopefully this is an informative video i'm gonna try to just answer questions off the top of my head too towards the end just in case i miss anything but yeah stay tuned what should i answer first okay let me just give you guys a little background just in case this is the first video you guys are seeing of me and my lock i've been locked for two years now i locked up on june 30 of 2020 I believe um, so yeah it's almost been three years actually I'm like two and a half years locked now and it's crazy to think about because it feels like I literally locked up yesterday um, this journey has been crazy like I've, I've grown so attached to my locks it's not even funny but I was already attached to my hair but now like I'm even more attached to my hair so it's just crazy to see like how much i've evolved with them and how much they've grown like with me and how much they're just like a part of me now like a part of my vessel part of my being a part of my spirit and yeah i have like a really strong bond with my locks at this point i can't even lie the question that everyone asks me all the time is how many locks do i have um i do not count my locks somebody told me that i shouldn't a few people told me that i shouldn't because it's just like some superstition behind it i am a superstitious person i can't lie so i don't think i will be counting my locks but i can tell you guys that i don't have any more than 50 locks i have somewhere between 40 and 50 locks so i hope that's helpful but <laughs> i feel like i'm gatekeeping my lock count <laughs> i low key am <laughs> um how did i start my locks so i started my locks with two strand twists um i guess i'll just like put some pictures into the video so you guys can kind of see where i started but yeah i started with two strand twists and yes they did unravel a little bit from time to time when i first started my locks and really all i did was just twist them back up and yeah just twist them back up <laughs> That's really all you could do. Like when your locks are unraveling, just twist them back up. They're gonna stay together eventually. How long were my starter locks? They were like, I, I had kind of like a lock bob, I think. Like they were like probably like up to here or something like that. I don't even know. Maybe I'll find like an old picture and like put it into the video. But my locks, like they were really weird when they first, like when I first started my locks, the length was really weird. Like it would sometimes look longer and sometimes look shorter. The thing about starter locks is they shrink and expand all the time. So there's no real way to tell what length your locks actually are until they really lock up. And then you can like see that continuous growth. But when you first are setting your locks, they will shrink and expand a lot. So just don't really worry about length too much honestly like that's not important the health of your locks are, is what's most important how long have i been growing my hair so i don't know if you're talking about like my locks or my natural hair but i've had natural hair my entire life i never um had a relax or anything like that and my hair was always pretty long growing up um before i locked my hair my hair was actually pretty long i'm pretty sure like it was like somewhere like right here i don't know i had like when i did have my loose hair i normally rocked it like curly and like in a puff and stuff like that i never really straightened my hair that much so i couldn't really tell you guys like an actual length but like i said we're just gonna add some pictures on the screen would i ever dye my locks um i want to like it it is something that i want to do conceptually but to actually execute it, I don't really see myself doing that anytime soon just because I'm really content with how healthy my hair is and I don't want to be looking like Lil Wayne eventually. I'm really scared to bleach my hair and I'm really scared to put any chemical products in my hair honestly because my hair has kind of been healthy my whole entire life. So yeah, my hair is like virgin hair. Like I never dyed my hair, nothing ever. So. I'm honestly terrified to try dyeing my locks, but maybe in the future when my locks are really long, I'll kind of be more willing to take that risk. But as of right now, I think I'm going to just stick with um, 
the black and that's honestly why I experiment with colors with my eyebrows so much because <laughs> I'm scared of like bleaching my hair so I'm just like fuck it let's just do our eyebrows and it's honestly more satisfying I honestly feel like I'm more content with colored eyebrows than I would be with colored hair because like nobody's really doing colored eyebrows like me I'm sorry like I'm not saying like I'm the colored eyebrows connoisseur but like come on I got navy blue eyebrows right now <laughs> how do I feel about texturism in the log community I really don't know what to say about it because it's just like there's texturism in the entire natural hair community and I'm not surprised that it happened in the lot community. I think that that's something that black people needs to work on as a whole when it comes to our hair and just it being more accepting of more kinky textures and more loving towards kinky textures. You can have kinkier hair and it be just as healthy and just as beautiful as looser hair. So that's my opinion on it. I feel like I can't really say too much about it because I am one of those people who have locks with a looser curl pattern, but I will say that I think all locks are beautiful, I think all textures are beautiful, and I think that as a community we need to work on being more accepting and more loving towards all hair textures and not just the ones that are more acceptable in society. Would I ever comb out my locks or cut them? No. Like I said in the beginning of the video, at this point I am very attached to my hair and I do see myself rocking my locks for a very long time. Um, at least until they reach my body and then once they reach my body, maybe I'll get tired of them and end up having to cut some of it off because of the weight and stuff like that. But I'm, me and my locks are locked in. <laughs> like literally bro <laughs> how much did my hair shed after i took out my faux locks so if you guys didn't know i did do faux locks on top of my natural locks last month and um i did talk about it in a previous video but if you didn't see i'll put it in this video as well the faux locks actually didn't affect my hair at all my hair is just as healthy it's just as thick it's just as Beautiful as it was before I did the faux locks on top of them, the only issue was I did end up cutting some of my ends as I mentioned in a previous video as well um, because I couldn't tell which hair was the extensions and which hair was my actual hair so yeah I don't know if you guys can like you guys wouldn't obviously be able to tell because y'all don't know like how long my ends actually were but I ended up cutting like probably like four or five of my locks like ends a little bit not completely like to the point where it was like a, a blunt nub but you can like clearly see like well at least for me because i know my hair i can clearly see like where i cut some of my ends off and it's just like what can i like it's whatever bro i can't glue it back on it's gone <laughs> i feel like maybe in the future i'll end up combing out more but honestly i don't really care that much like it's not that serious to me any hair growth tips for me i would just say less is more the less that you maintain and style your locks the more that they will flourish my retwist schedule is a little bit more spread out now so like maybe i'll like retwist like for one for two weeks straight and then like for a month i'll like just completely not retwist just to give my hair that room to breathe and like just do what it does without me kind of forcing it to look a certain way i like to spray my hair with water almost every day and moisturize it with different oils um for me that has helped my hair stay very shiny and moisturized and healthy looking so how do you take care of your locks daily so honestly i don't um i leave my hair alone a lot of the time because i feel like it's important to just let your hair breathe sometimes and to not be styling it all the time because that's what causes breakage and thinning and for me obviously like i like to style my hair often because i create content and things of that nature but there are times where i will go days or like even like a week without styling my hair and just letting it look how crazy it wants to look because that's important just to have your hair kind of just be in its natural state without you 
manipulating it every day all day <laughs> so yeah that's honestly probably one of the most important tips i can give you guys about locks is to just make sure that you're not doing too much like less is really more when it comes to locks how often was i getting my hair retwisted in the starter lock phase so when i did start my locks i did struggle with them unraveling a lot and things of that nature so i was retwisting them probably every month or so or every three weeks it was not like a linear um, retwisting schedule but it was often enough for my hair to kind of like stay together um, i also started interlocking my hair in my starter lock phase so that they would stay together as well because having a looser curl pattern kind of prevented my hair from you know locking quickly and molding into that lock form without unraveling so i did spend a lot of my starter lock phase interlocking my hair was my loose hair as thick as my locks yes i've always had thick ass hair because my hair is different textures and different like places so basically the front of my hair is like more 3c and then the back of my hair is 3c the middle is like the tightest my hair is so 4a um and that kind of caused my hair to be like really thick um and that's also why i kind of was quick to lock my hair or part of why i was quick to lock my hair because the different like textures and dealing with that was a struggle <laughs> when i would do natural hairstyles so yeah do you go to a loctician or do you do them yourself um i go to my mother she does hair she's a hairstylist i said this in my first um lock q a video she's still the only one that touches my hair besides myself when you first locked your hair did you like them or did it take some time getting used to i loved my locks off rip loved them because i've always wanted locks like since i was like 10 years old bro my mom just never let me because she thought it was just a phase whole time i ended up with locks 10 years later <laughs> But I've always loved my locks, so like in every phase I've loved them. Um, they were a really, really huge part of my spiritual journey, so I I could never like feel like my locks were ugly or they weren't what I wanted them to be or look like because they literally helped shape me and I grew with them, I transformed with them, and yeah, like kudos to my locks. <laughs> Do you eat anything or take supplements for your hair? No, I do not, but I take a bunch of vitamins daily and there are too many to name right now. I can't really, um, I mean, I could name a few, so I don't know if they have anything to do with my hair though. I just, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> there's just vitamins, but I feel like vitamins kind of help with like every part of your body. But right now the vitamins that I am taking are bladder rack, turmeric, iron, vitamin D, um, I'm taking some prebiotics. I don't really feel like that. That obviously doesn't have anything to do with my hair. I don't know, maybe it does. Just take it or leave it. <laughs> what do I think about rose water? Personally, I don't use it. I have really sensitive skin and I had one really bad experience with rose water when I was in high school and haven't touched it since. So yeah, I don't use rose water. I just use regular water. Um, and sometimes I'll put like oil in my water. How long would I recommend leaving protective styles over locks? When I did my faux locks over my locks, I kept it in for a month, but really I wanted to take it out like probably a week before or two weeks before, honestly, because they were very heavy. They were literally so long and that's why I did not want to keep them because I felt like they were just like tugging on my locks. So I honestly wouldn't recommend you keeping them in your hair for over a month just because of that tension and you don't want to end up thinning out your locks or anything like that. What made me want to lock my hair up? Oh my God, I don't even know. Like, I've wanted locks since I was young, and I think it's because what was the first? What was the first reason I? I don't know. Like living in New York and growing up in New York in Brooklyn, a lot of people around me had locks. A lot of my family members had locks. A lot of the people in my community had locks and I just always thought that they were beautiful and I always just wanted them. I don't think I can remember a specific moment where I decided that I wanted them, but I know that I've always wanted them like literally since I was very young. So yeah, I'm just a fan of locks. How long does it take for locks to thicken up? I honestly don't know how to answer that question because I 
already had thick hair when I did start my locks so I would just say it depends on your hair type it depends on how big your locks are like how big the parts are that you make your locks and just like your genetics I guess but I do feel like everyone's locks generally gets thicker as they continue to mature so I'm pretty sure like everyone's locks mostly mature around like the one to two year mark so yeah I don't know if that's accurate or not what products do I use to moisturize my ends um, I moisturize my ends with TGIN double butter cream I believe that's what it's called if I can find a picture of it then I'll just plop it on the screen but um yeah I use that and yes I still comb out my ends just not as often as I used to when I first locked up because like you know it's just not really like necessary for me anymore because my locks are so long like I don't really feel the need to it's just when they start looking like really dry and crusty that's when I decide to moisturize and detangle them again but I used to detangle them like almost every time that I would retwist my hair and wash my hair but these days I'm kind of just letting my ends do their thing while like maintaining them here and there can you film your edges tutorial yes I got you guys in a separate video I will film an edge tutorial for you guys y'all have been asking me this forever I'm not gatekeeping um I got y'all what's your hair type do you feel like your hair is healthier locked um, my hair type, as you see in the title, is 3C and 4A. And do I feel like my hair is healthier locked? Um, yes, I think. I don't know. It's hard to tell because, like, my hair is all matted up. <laughs> but, yeah, my locks are pretty healthy. But my natural hair was really healthy, too. It was just, like, hard to maintain. So I would just say, like, it's the same. Because I've always taken care of my hair. Like, it's not like I had... You know really damaged hair before i locked up what are my favorite hair products so i really love hair oils i love jojoba oil or jojoba oil or jojoba oil however you decide you want to say it um, i also love jamaican castor oil haitian castor oil those are like the main oils that i use in my hair and sometimes i'll use rosemary oil um and i think i use miel's or miel's oil serum that was like trending on tiktok i used to use that oil a lot not so much anymore because it's like i never see it in stores anymore but jojoba oil and castor oil are my main squeezes do you think it's harder trying to do hairstyles with extensions on your locks definitely because of the tension and the weight when i did have the faux locks on my locks i did not style them at all like Cause they were like really 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 heavy i mean i'm pretty sure that would be different if like because some people i don't know y'all y'all are gonna see when i like I, the locks were very long so <laughs> i really just did not have any room to do styles especially because my hair is also very thick so if i did put them up it would just be twice as heavy and i feel like that would have just been dragging it and doing too much to my actual locks underneath the faux locks so yeah i think it's hard depending on the length that you get your faux locks on top of your locks and also just how thick your hair actually is underneath it if i could do my lock journey now what would i do differently honestly probably just not cut my ends off when i did my faux locks <laughs> like that's really it i've been really intentional really mindful throughout my entire journey of my locks so i don't think there's anything i would have done differently except for that <laughs> do you have a spiritual attachment with your locks yes i very much do um when i started my locks back in 2020 i was in a very emotionally vulnerable place and i was going through a lot in my life and i had to surrender to a lot in my life and locking my hair was a part of me surrendering to my journey and just the cycles that I was going through and everything that I was learning at that point in my life and it really helped me just kind of accept my fate and accept the fact that everything that is taking place in my life is for my greater good whether it seems that way in this moment or not um, so surrendering to that and locking my hair and surrendering to how my hair was growing and transforming and evolving in its own ways without me you know 
doing anything to it or making it do anything just kind of like it was just it was symbolic for me um so yeah i really am grateful for me kind of taking that step and allowing that transformation to happen um, with my hair surrendering to all of the things that was happening in my life through my hair um a lot of people probably don't really feel that deeply about their locks because like it's trending now but for me it was very different um and I just feel like really full of gratitude that I've made it this far with them. Like it, it's just, it feels surreal to be honest because I think when you first lock your hair, like you're kind of just like ready for it to grow and ready for it to evolve into its, you know, mature form. But like when you get there, it's just like, sheesh, like, I can't believe like we've been through all this. <laughs> like, I can't believe I've had this for this long. Like it just doesn't feel like it, it feels, unreal so yeah i'm just truly grateful for this journey i'm grateful for my locks i'm grateful to have this awareness and to be so grateful for my locks and to you know be able to express my gratitude for them and to share that with you guys with your locks what are three things that you found you really shouldn't do honestly probably just not maintaining them so much, um, not putting too many products in them, and just also making sure that you're sleeping with a scarf and a bonnet on or some of some sort because locks love lint. There were times where I've skipped putting a bonnet on, I've skipped putting a scarf on, and I regret it because there are certain pieces of lint that are just in my locks for good. So yeah that's that's another good tip please wrap your locks how often do i retwist my hair so at this point in my lock journey i don't really i don't really retwist my hair that often um it used to be once a month but nowadays it's like once every month and a half once every two months i do palm roll the front often obviously when i'm styling my hair it's a kind of make it look neat even though like underneath it looks crazy but yeah i try to like spread out my retwist now just because i really want to just let my hair flourish more and like i said less is more with locks so i do feel like the less that you retwist your hair the more it will grow at least from my experience do you brush your locks um i do brush my locks not as often as i used to but i do think it really does help with getting lint out of your locks and kind of maintaining that like freshness with like the little particles that get stuck in your locks sometimes. I do recommend brushing your locks, just probably not when you're first starting your locks because um, it's obviously gonna probably make them unravel a little bit. But when you do have more mature locks, definitely don't be scared to brush your locks. Just make sure the brush you're using is soft and not brittle. What do I think of people relaxing their locks? I didn't even know that was a thing. I didn't know you can do that and i also don't really see a point because it's like doesn't all matted hair kind of look the same or similar i don't know kind of seems pointless but to each their own how do i maintain my curly ends without split ends um i do get split ends i just cut my ends whenever i see them splitting some people might not want to do that personally i can't look at split that split ends without ripping them off or cutting them so <laughs> Who was my inspiration to lock my hair? Um, like I said, I've always wanted locks since I was young, but my mom does also have locks. She locked her hair in 2017, and I think when she did start her locks, it kind of motivated me even more to start mine because I really loved how her locks looked and how they were growing so beautifully. Um, so yeah, if anybody inspired me, it was definitely my mom. Not related to your locks, but what happened to your pet snake? I'm dead because if you remember my pet snake then you've been here for a long time because my the last time my pet snake was alive was in like 2017 may he rest in peace his name was Orochimaru like that nigga from Naruto and he's buried in the front yard of my old crib back in Flatbush <laughs> I miss him to be honest he was a little crazy snake but you know he lived a great life what do I use on my edges? I answered this question before a billion times, but I'll answer it again. I use Raspberry Edge Booster. That's the only thing I use on my edges and probably the only thing I will use on my edges until I die. Um, 
I think that if you do use this edge booster, then you need to definitely make sure your edges are wet first. I always tell people, make sure you have water on your edges before you apply the edge booster because that's what allows it to dry nicely and it also allows for flaking to not happen. Can we see your starter lock stages? <laughs> If I hadn't, if I haven't already put pictures on the screen, you know, I'll just, I'll just add a bunch of pictures throughout this video. Do I do different lock styles or are they always loose? Um, I pretty much rotate the same lock styles over and over again <laughs> with my hair. Um, but I've started trying new hairstyles recently. Maybe I'll do an updated like go-to hairstyles video for you guys. But for the most part, I do pretty much wear the same hairstyles all the time. I'm not mad at it though, but like. <laughs> what's my lock wash day routine so if you've seen the video on my page i still do use dr bronner's am i ashy or am i just hyper pigmented um <laughs> i still do use dr bronner's um castile soap on my locks and then i'll use as i am um coconut co-wash as well that's still my routine um, nothing has changed but I do want to, I think, try to find an actual like conditioner for my hair instead of using a co-wash all the time just to kind of get a deeper condition. So if you guys have any recommendations, feel free to leave me some in the comments. Would I say that my locks made me more confident? Yes, I do feel like my locks made me a lot more confident in not only my appearance, but just who I am. I feel way more aware. I feel way more intentional with my locks. Not to say that I didn't already possess these traits. The thing about my locks is I feel like they amplified all the things that already existed within my being and within my vessel, within my spirit. It just made those things way more clear to me and that's why I'm just so eternally grateful for them. Would I recommend starting locks with twists or coils? It just depends on the type of locks that you want. If you want thicker locks like mine, then I would recommend twists obviously, but Coils are not like a bad option as well. I just think that twists are probably like the best way to go if you want more full locks. How do I maintain a fresh retwist? I really don't. My retwists don't last very long. Um, unless like I'm interlocking my hair, which I don't really do anymore. So yeah, my, my retwists expire like very often, which is why I don't bother retwisting that often anymore. So my camera died, but the last question that I was answering was, how do I feel at this point in my vlog journey? And like I was saying, I just feel really grateful. I feel like it was all worth it. Like just every phase, every stage, every trial and error, every cycle, like it all kind of is paying off. I'm able to be able to witness myself through my vlogs and to evolve with my vlogs and to grow as a team. And yeah, I feel really deeply about my vlogs. So. And I just can't wait to see how deep my connection can get with my vlogs, how much more having vlogs can teach me. And yeah, so that would be the last question that I answered today for you guys. Um, I hope this video was informative. Let me know if you have any more questions. I'll answer them in the comments. I hope you guys enjoyed this Q&A and I hope that it helped you kind of answer some of the questions that you needed answered before you start your logs yourself or before you start someone else's logs or before you take starting your logs into consideration. Personally, I'm an advocate for logs. I think everyone should have logs. Well, everyone who's... You know. Yeah, I think everyone who is capable should have logs. I think that logs can be very transformative. I think they can be very um, beneficial to your spiritual journey. And I think that it can be a really life-changing experience for a lot of people. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. Thank you for supporting me and continuing to witness me and holding space for me. I love you guys and I'll see you guys in my next video.